This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger's The Tales of Hoffman from 1951. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But RJ, yeah, you, 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 what, you, hi, you want you want to hear about a tagline? Uh, does it have one? It does. Is this movie fucking 200 years old. It's got a tagline. Uh, it does. Okay. They, they had posters back then with taglines. Hmm. And this one, you will never see anything finer on the screen. Anything finer? Anything. I feel like saying something like that's got to be reserved for like, ain't nothing finer than eating in this diner. You know what I mean? Shouldn't be used for movies. Maybe like sulfate pepperoni sticks. Oh, how much sulfate is in that? Costco size sulfates. Oh man, that's gonna dry you out. But it's a good, good kind of dried out, where you wake up like in pain, but you're like, ah, it tasted good though. And if you've got an active open sore on the inside of your mouth, that salt will burn. Oh, oh but that's good though. That's that's all medicine is. Yeah. You know, you know about medicine. Yeah, I know about taking my medicine. <laughs> Like, like oh. we do every week. Mm-hmm. The synopsis for The mm-hmm. Tales of Hoffman. Uh, yes. In this film adaptation of the Offenbach opera, a young poet named Hoffman broods over his failed romances. First, his affair with the beautiful Olympia is shattered when he realizes that she is really a mechanical woman designed by a scientist. Next, he believes that a striking prostitute loves him only to find out she was hired to fake her affection by the dastardly Dapper Tutu. Dapper Tutu? Lastly, a magic spell claims the life of his final lover. Shit. Damn. Damn. So, RJ, first of all, what can you tell us about Jacques Offenbach? Fuck, what else? What would you want to know? Um, One of the greats? Uh... People have been trying to copy him for years, and honestly, no one's ever got as close as he did. Like he was, uh, you, when you talk about the big weights, you talk about Offenbach, you talk about Klothheimer, you talk about Guggenbuch, and uh, these guys, Jared, they're the top of the top. <laughs> what was that last name? No, Guggenbuch. Guggenbuch. Okay. Guggenbuch. He's Austrian. He's Austrian, is is so. that it was was now is he a, a cellist or an impresario? Uh it's a it, common misconception. He wasn't actually either of those. He played the oboe. Oh, he's an oboist. He was an oboeman, but he actually wrote grand symphonies as well. So <laughs> grand symphonies, <laughs> grand symphonies. They were symphonies supported about graham crackers. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all these guys. Let me just suffice to say, they were pretty good guys. Good dudes. They were pretty good guys. How how does he stack up with Strauss? With Strauss? Yeah. Strauss isn't even really in the ball game with some of these dudes. Like some of these dudes, Jared, these are serious dudes. These are like like do you know Offenbuch and Guggenbach? I know Sullivan. Sullivan Sullivan's alright. <clears throat> Sullivan's alright. He's not like it's not like a Kleinheiser. Kleinheiser's a different kind of brand altogether, to be very honest. Um, but well, uh, that yeah. all being said, so there's everyone's yeah, history yeah, lesson. Yeah. yeah, yeah. These are these are what you would call the titans of the of the craft. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> this this tales of Hoffman um, yeah. is based on a opera fantastique by this Jacques yeah. Offenbach. Mm-hmm. Um, the French libretto is written by Jules Barbier based on three short stories by E.T.A. Hoffman, who is the protagonist of the story. Yeah. Um, f- trivia note, Tales of Hoffman uh, was the final work of Offenbach. He died in October of 1880, four months before the premiere. Yeah, I mean, the tricky thing with that is like when you die, you're not going to do that again. And it's like lesson learned. And just like, you know, uh, an RIP for the Ufer, um, we have a nice little photo of him actually on uh, Instagram right now in his uh, very nice yeah. fine fur coat thing. Nice little glasses. Looks like a sweet man. 
whatever it was, he was rocking it, and he was and he was feeling good about it. You know, man. sometimes you say he was, he was like a sweet man, and you're like, oh, I better make sure uh, I check to see if there's any controversies on his Wikipedia page that I, I looked at earlier, like you know, weeks ago, not just right now, live. Well, yeah, we wouldn't do that. We're a professional no. podcast. Real, real pros, real buffs yep. of history. Yeah, this is a professional podcast. Buff daddies. Yep. No. Yep. Yeah. The uh, well, okay. So this is based on the author, one Ernst Theodore Amadeus Hoffman, commonly abbreviated as ETA Hoffman. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about, like, what are your thoughts on him? Hoffman? Yeah. I mean, Hoffman's one of those dudes I never really understood. Like, uh, I understand the bravitas that he brought to some of these things. I understand the confidence and I understand the determination. The swagger. That, well, I mean, that's not quite the word I would use. I would I would say something more of um, kind of a stank. Oh. It's not really a swagger, but it's kind of a stank where it's like, you know, it's there and you can feel it. So you got Hoffman. Like, you got, so you on one side, you got Hoffman stank and yeah. you got that um, <laughs> Offenbach drip. And, when yeah, you, uh, and you get a, a drippy yes. stank. Yes, I, I mean, I honestly, I couldn't put it any better myself. You got the Hoffenbach uh, drip, and the Hoff er, and the Hoffman stank, the Offenbach drip, and the Hoffman stank. What we're trying to say, what you're trying that, to say, what I'm trying to say is, I'm a pretty big opera guy, and um, this is one of those movies that uh, when it came along, I was kind of like, this is me, this is me on paper, this is it, this is your story. Yeah, this is. <laughs> This is me. Like, it's not even a story, Jerry. This is just who I am. So uh, I appreciated it. But yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a stank, I would say, is what uh, he was putting out. Because it's kind of like, um, you know it's there. Is it bad? You're not sure. Uh, what's your what's your favorite uh, novella? Uh, the Nutcracker? Or? Um, or? <laughs> you only gave me one option uh... there. How about Little Zacks from, from 1818? Well, I prefer uh, a little buff voice, to be honest, <laughs> but uh, Little Zacks is... How about The Life and Opinions of the Tomcat Murr? Mm, I prefer, other than the Tomcat Murr, I prefer the Meerkat oh. Tom. What about... That's a, a far better one. Master Flea, a fairy tale and seven adventures of two friends. Yeah, that's about um, Flea from uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. You know the guitarist? Uh, this, that's what that's this, about. This Flea is a real cutie. The guitarist? Flea? Yeah, no, he's a no, pretty good uh, The Flea of uh, Miss, Mr. Flu. Flu. Oh, like a, like a literal flea is what you're talking about. Yeah. And Dylan Flea. I still haven't talked about that video he sent us. we got to talk about that next week. we got to talk about that next week. Um. But, uh, okay, so you sent me an image here. Oh, look at this little guy. Look at him. Look at his big old blanket. Look at him. His big old blanket and his little, like, torch or something. Well, I mean, if yeah. that if that wasn't one of the finest uh, encapsulations of ETA Hoffman. I mean, people understand when they come here. We are only going to give them the information that is the best. So, like, literally the best. I don't know if you've looked so. this guy up, but, yes, the our lead actor... Mm-hmm. Who plays Hoffman? He, uh, I guess, kind of resembles this dark-haired man. Um, potentially. Potentially. I mean, I can... a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I, I wouldn't say a lot, but I'd say a little bit. A little bit. He's a little bit there. So that's what they're going for. So I don't, I don't know if this guy would have signed off on this depiction of himself as this, mm. like, I don't know, kind of just, just can't, just can't. To get anything past these ladies, can't can't enjoy himself because they're they're either dying, turning out to be automatons, mm-hmm. getting stolen yep. away, and he's just mm-hmm. and he's telling all these sad stories down down in the basement bar, down in the bar. No, yeah, you don't want that either. Like, I don't know. A lot of people lost their lives down in those bars. Okay, Do you know what I mean. <sighs> So, uh, this movie's British. Uh, yeah. It is very much technicolory. It's a very mm-hmm. colorful film. It is from the the directing team of Michael Powell and Emmerich Presper, who we've talked about before a few mm-hmm. times now. 
Goblin. Uh, this is we, third we talked about Red Shoes, Black yep. Narcissus. Uh, there's that. I know where I'm going. I believe uh, that's yeah. that's blood on that's blood on their hands. Yeah, that's um. Oh, and of course, known. the the movie that uh, people hate us for the most, I think, is the Life and Death of Colonel Blimp. I, I still don't understand. We were like, yeah, this is a good movie, and people were like, fuck you, you piece of shit. And it's just like, well, we said it was good, and it, and people are like, not good enough. And Michael Powell, also uh, director of Peeping Tom. So mm. that was so long ago that we watched these things. It seems. Yeah. A lifetime yeah. ago. Yeah. Well, uh, I will say that I don't really. I'm not familiar with uh, most of the actors in this movie. How about you, RJ? How, are, are, are you a, are, are you a Robert Ronesville fan? Moira Shear, mm. Robert Helpman. Uh Moira, I'm down with, but uh, the Helpman, mm. not not down with the Helpman. He's uh, yeah. never been one of my favorites. Not really. So, um, when did you realize this was entirely going to be an opera? Um. I I'm not gonna lie to you, Jared. It's about thirty minutes in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you I watched it for like thirty, and I was like, "It's gonna." I was like, "It's gonna give." Wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, "Something's got to give here for a little bit." I was like, "They're not gonna do it the whole time. They're not gonna do it the whole time." And then uh, after a while, I went, "They're gonna do it the whole time." Yeah. So I, I don't know. Maybe not thirty, but it was definitely, potentially. 15 minutes okay well for sure i um i hadn't thought about it too much but then you messaged me like days ago yes with uh gifs of one pavarotti and to which Uh i was like and i'm like what is this about and then i thought (laughs) about it and i went oh oh no and then you sent me (laughs) another pavarotti i was like oh no (laughs) and i was like is that what is in store for me Mm-hmm. And then you look at the runtime, and you go, "Oh no, oh sweet baby Jesus, no, 136 <laughs> minute opera. Mm-hmm. That, that this can't, this isn't going to go well. This is, oh no, this is going to be the magic flute all over again." I I thought you might say that, and I mean, so when I was, as always, Andrea was like, "What are you watching this week?" And uh, so I did actually. I I just I pulled up the page. I was like, I don't know. I was like, let me fucking check because I usually don't look. But uh, I was like, it is a two and two hours, 15 minute opera. And she went, no. And I went, yeah, that's the right call. I mean, that's the right she, call. She Homer Simpson into the hinge. Just. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. no. Yeah. And I was like, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. So hmm. fair. Yeah, it, was a, it was a tough one. Fair. Tough. Uh, so the movie opens up with a prologue. Yeah, uh, we have our man Hoffman. Mm-hmm. He, he's looking all sweaty, bouffanted up in the crowd, observing and watching this woman dancing. She dances on the stage, the ballerina. She performs. Uh, what is it? The ballet of the enchanted dragonfly. Oh, who could um, forget? She's making kind of like eyes at this guy in the crowd, yeah. going like, "Hi." You're looking at me. You like what you see, hunk. Mm-hmm. Well, Ooh. behind this, behind the curtain, though, there's a a schemester, one Councillor Lindorf, and uh, mm-hmm. he makes his way there. He's like, <laughs> I'm a bad guy. He uh, he's doing some hand rubbing. Yeah, a little to <laughs> emphasize that he yes. is a bad. Person. And he's got a purse with some coin in it. Uh, there's this Ooh. there's this large chap. Who's kind of waiting at the out, out just outside of uh, the stage side, just just uh, a stage the stagehand area, yeah. And he's like watching this all kind of, it's also sweaty, and sk- grinning and smiling, and yeah. she's performing and performing, and then she kind of goes over there and hands this man a note with a key. Uh, yeah, that's definitely what happens. Yes, and he's like, "Oh yes, yes." And you're like, "What is she giving this? She wants this guy to meet her? 
That's the, that's what I was reading it initially. Mm. But then Mr. Schemester, Mr. Lindorf, he's like, I will. I want to give you money for it. And it's all silent, I should point out. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no dialogue at all. It's, it's just, this is all driven by the music. There is no singing. Uh, it's really good visual storytelling. Mm-hmm. And there's the whole buildup of like, how many coins is it going to take for this guy to get that little note uh, off of him? Mm-hmm. And uh, he eventually, every man has his price, as Ted DiBiase taught us in the oh, 80s. Ted DiBiase said that? <laughs> yeah. Every, is he every, eating... every week. Was he slinging down any pepperoni while he was saying that? Uh, just just the meat sauce he gave to Virgil. Okay. I understand. I understand. Mm-hmm. So, uh, he's got the scam going. Where it's, like, it's the note saying, hey, I'm really into you, Hoffman. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we, should, we should hang out. Mm-hmm. But Hoffman's a little like, oh, well, this broad... She's uh, she's gonna stand me up like all the other women, and let me tell you all about it. And there's a musical number as you go to the bar. Uh, we get some dancing beer steins. Ooh. And uh, how festive were they? Did you feel like pretty? Were you were you like like hey, I feel good. I mean, okay, so. Whatever uh, you might think from my tone talking about this film, this movie sure. looks amazing. Yes, it, it does. It, it looks yes, it does. gorgeous, as you would expect, I guess, from uh, the archers of uh, Powell and Pressburger. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's like this is these are the guys who did the red shoes, but yes, it uh, is. but they kind of couch the extravagance of the red shoes into a production, and they also make like a a story with characters and arcs Mm -hmm. and stuff like that that you can kind of get brought into. And then they do the phantasmagorical performance. This is just phantasmal performance. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of flash, Jerry. A lot 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 of of flash. And it definitely probably would help to to read a little bit about what you're in store for before things get going. Uh, That wasn't the case for me. But hopefully that was for you, and it hopefully was, that that I I, 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 I did decide because I was like, you know what, this could be a, a real King Lear ran type of deal, mm-hmm. where I should uh, just you know brush up on the arcs, on the, sure. on the axe, uh, make sure. sure I kind of know where things are going pacing wise, just in case something gets lost in the translation. Uh, mm-hmm. So anyway, this guy is getting drunk, telling everybody about his problems. He tells a story about a clown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hilarious just any clown or there's some uh there's some mice in this mice yeah man you know man mice man mice Mm -hmm. jesus uh then it transitions to this guy getting drunk and we get to see the three stories all starring him um and his failings with the ladies the the first one is the yellow story uh, where like there's a, a whole heck of a lot of yellow throughout the whole mm. uh, stage setting. Uh, this is Olympia, and she is a a robot woman. Yeah, created by a scientist, Spallanzani. Spallanzani, uh, like that kind. Yeah, or? yeah, and, and okay. I, I guess the the idea here is, is that Spall Spallanzani and uh, this other guy. Who's a who makes magic glasses? Mm-hmm. Capellius. Oh, Capellius. Yeah, yeah they're, I, I guess they're trying to be like, hey, maybe we can uh, convince this guy that she's real because we're so damn good, and see if he can really fall in love with her. That's that's kind of the 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 idea behind it all. And so it's just like it's all kind of like a it's a comedy. Mm-hmm. But it's sort of it's such a depressing story. This whole thing is with this sad fucking guy, and then you get to the end, and he's still fucking sad. He's this like old wretch because nothing works out. And you're like, oh damn, and they uh, they told stories differently uh, back in the 1880s. Mm-hmm. You thought it was all smiles and sunshine, didn't you, folks? But that's what you're that's what you're expecting from a big, colorful opera thing but no opera I, opera's got some tragedy to it and some sadness but it's like so matter of fact because it's just like it's just about a guy who uh has bad luck with women that's it i i mean i get it and the one thing i'll say is 
you know, a lot of these people, as you put, going in, you say opera, it's all smiles and sunshine. But when I saw the two, two and a quarter timestamp for an opera movie, I'm going to let you know right now, Jared, I was not smiles and sunshine. Mm-hmm. So there is a little flip there. But yeah, these guys were, uh, they like to be sad boys. You know about mm-hmm. sad boys? I've heard about them. Yeah, they like to be sad boys from time to time. So. Well, I don't think this guy doesn't look like a, he wants to be a sad boy. He, um, He didn't want to be, but you know, no incels want to be incels, right? Right. Well, this, yeah, and that's the, I guess the tragedy here is like, oh, if this guy didn't just go down and be all sad bastardy down in the basement, things might have worked out for him. Mm-hmm. But... He had to go just get wasted, <laughs> and then the yeah. and then the uh, old Lindor swoops in. And he's just like, "Come right this way with me." Mm-hmm. Well, isn't that how it always happens? Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, like in real life, the Count Lindorf's waiting, waiting for you to get real drunk, and then he's like, "Hey, girl, let's go back to my place, Netflix." I mean, chill. Yes, yes. That is what happens in a lot of real life situations. Mm-hmm. So, I guess one's appreciation for all this might be increased if you're like really into dance. Because I, I feel like yeah. um, the performances on that level are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll just say the uh, the one thing, the best thing for me watching this compared to other musicals that people do like, like a Chicago is that this, this knows how to frame its musical performances, which is, you know, you want that long enough shot where you can see the full performer's body. Mm -hmm. You don't do close ups. You actually show like their full, you know, every, all the performers bodies are on full display and you just get to see it all, I guess, in terms of like what they're doing. Cause like the whole idea is like, well, it's movement and, you know, making shapes <laughs> from, of their mm-hmm. body, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, like this is the only way to appreciate it properly. And it's like one of those subtle things that when you watch like a singing in the rain or watch a tales of Hoffman, uh, properly framed dancing, it, it works. You can, you can watch it if one's into that kind of thing. Particularly, yes. particularly, and that was another thing that was really nice with Swing Time mm-hmm. from ages ago is that uh, they know how to shoot dancing. Yeah, it was a uh, vibrant, dynamic, Di- dynamic, dynamos. You know about dynamics, mm-hmm. Jarrett? It's different from static. No. It's oh, the opposite. yeah. One thing I forgot about too. So Hoffman's got a friend, and uh, the, what's their name? Shit. You, Hoffman's you, Fred? Hoffman's best buddy in these it's flashbacks. Steve, I think. Is it Steve? <laughs> it might be Steve. You don't know. Could be as simple as that. I think it's Steve. Oh my god. I actually you know you know I don't pay attention to names very much. So. But you know but you know there's the character, right? Yeah, I know the character that you mean. Yeah. Huh. Well, I seem to not be able to get in the name of the character because it's I think it's it's a woman playing the role too, if I'm not mistaken. Um. Okay, I think that's what it is. It's Nicholas play, uh, and it's Pamela Brown is playing Nicholas. 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 Okay, I gotcha. Okay. Uh, what is that? The role of Nicholas is a bridge, though Nicholas, as played by Pamela Brown, still appears. Um, there, there well, he was there for sure. Yes. Okay. So anyway, they're around and kind of seems to be uh, like the audience kind of character, which is aware of like Hoffman getting tricked. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But anyway, I mean, uh, something like that. So the the the, the Olympia robot woman, uh, she eventually gets, she starts freaking out and gets disassembled, and then you see her decapitated head. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's some uh, good basic uh, theatrical dismemberment that looks pretty decent, and there's springs coming out of the head. Looks not too bad. Uh, with the springs? Yeah. 
and there's the, actually there's a couple effects in here that actually look pretty good yeah like um well i mean the movie itself as you pointed out right the movie looks good but there's a couple effects that uh that um when i was watching i was like Ooh. i was like that's not bad it's pretty good pretty good production yeah pretty good set yeah pretty good pretty good mm. Uh, then the second story is about the courtesan, uh, mm-hmm. Julieta, uh, which also kind of has a similar, <laughs> the, the next two to me are very similar of, uh, Julieta and Antonia and these scheming men. One, so in the, this first, the second one, it's the magician Depper Tutu. And then in the next one, it's. Doctor Miracle. <laughs> Doctor Miracle. Doctor Miracle. Hmm. Is that wasn't that your uh, wasn't that your nickname in high school? Doctor Miracle. Was that, or was that your porn name? <laughs> That's a weird porn name, RJ. Doctor Miracle. Yeah, it's pretty strange. Well, I mean, maybe. I, I feel like you don't watch enough pornos to actually know what the names of people in pornos are. Closest thing to a porno I've ever seen was a David Lynch movie. So. <laughs> and that was pretty was, pornographic. Was that Dune? Uh, yeah, it was 100% Dune. That and the straight story. The straight story was the closest thing I've ever seen to a porno. Okay. So, scary stuff. I'm not going to lie to you. Scary stuff. Scary stuff. Uh, so, yeah, she's trying to steal his reflection. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, that's there's how a, these things usually go. There's a whole mirror thing going on. Yeah. That's how this stuff usually goes. <laughs> usually. Trying to always... I've, se- I've, I've seen that thing a million times. These, these ladies are always trying to steal your reflection. Yeah, that's how this thing always always goes. No. Yeah. Yeah, and that in the third story, and by this point, my, uh, my attention had seriously begun to wane. And I'd look up and be like, man, that's a gorgeous looking set. Oh, the colors are totally different in this one. Um, and this one's about a woman who must not sing, otherwise she'll die. But all oh, that Dr. Miracle, he gets her to sing. <laughs> and, every, it's all, and, and then everyone's sad. It's like the power of uh, the power of song, Jared. Like, you ever seen one of those high school musicals? Never in my life, RJ. Oh, I, I I doubt that, but um, I'm I've never, never. seen them. I I just feel like you have. No, uh, I feel like that's what those movies are about. You ever seen Chicago, Jarrett? I have under your uh, high recommendation. <laughs> Is that movie not the power of music, the power of song? No, it makes me hate hearing. He had it coming, Jarrett. <laughs> sucks. He had it coming. He only had himself to blame. Oh, it's so bad. If you'd have seen it, mm-hmm. if you'd have been there. You would have done it all the same. I've seen Chicago a few times, Jer. Mm-hmm. In my in my youth. In my youth. In what were we youth. talking about? The uh, power of song. Yeah. The power of song until you s- until you get tricked into singing when you're not supposed to, and then you die. Yeah. And then Hoffman. And then Hoffman, because I think it's in the second story. He's got that soul patch that he's like yeah. stroking. Mm-hmm. And then is that where you get the? Uh, this is right near the end, right? Uh, yes. And then you get the epilogue and then you get back, like back, back scene. in, back in Nuremberg. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. I like that scene where the guys are changing and she's, and she's there. Like, you know, that when it gets into that very lucid type of stuff near, right near the end. Mm. And, uh, you see the different versions of people like Hoff, like soul patch Hoffman and, you know, yeah. other people. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, yeah, and then the movie wraps up like with I've already said before, uh, drunk son of a bitch surrounded by steins and uh, just face planted on the table. She's like, "Oh my goodness!" And then uh, that that, that Lindor shows up and he's like, it's, "Let's abscond." Well, abscond and uh, get out of here quickly. Should have known. Should have known better. Well. You know, in in the moment, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Temptation um, is a hell of a thing. Hell of a thing. There's yeah. the one piece of music that I recognized uh, specifically in this too. I can't remember the name. It's like 
build something like that. And I believe it is in the second story. Uh, and I was like, I have no idea. I don't know my operas, and I don't know if it's from this particular one. Belle knew it. Oh, knew it d'amour. Is that something like Lady Knight, Oh Knight Love? I think, it's, I think it stands for that. That is which the, cannot be given. The, the die Bart die. <laughs> well, it just means the Bart. The. Yeah. Oh, well. No one who speaks German could mean any harm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Same kind, same kind of thing. Same, same difference. Mm. So anyway, RJ, how many times are you going to be returning to the Tales of Hoffman in your life? I'm watching it right now. Oh, I got. Uh, you can't see this, but I got a little. I got a little uh, 12 inch LCD mounted on my wall here, and uh, I've been watching it this whole time we've been recording. Cool, cool. Yeah, watching it right now. This is a screenshot movie. It's yes, got, it's got some. I mean, which is not fair because a lot of it is. I guess the dance. The dancing all seems yeah. good. It's an elaborate production. But if you don't connect with this material, boy howdy, you're going to feel like you're just sitting there watching a thing mm-hmm. happen in front of you. And it's like, I, I guess. I'm, I am i don't know. I wasn't moved or caught up in any of it. Um, it was all just purely visual to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, well, that's a really cool costume. Sometimes you're like, oh, that's less impressive. Um, there's some good, you know, uh, blocking. <laughs> if you want to start blocking. talking about, yeah, some stage blocking, RJ. Uh, no, where people are get out of here. It's pretty good. Some of it's pretty good. It, it better be. I mean, that's all it's got going for it. It is an opera. Uh, it is definitely better than the Magic Flute. I, I'm going to say that. Uh, Ma- Magic Flute. Agreed. Uh, just makes me mad, despite the fact that it has the coolest costumes ever. Those animal mm. costumes are amazing. Um, mm-hmm. But that that is that movie is super trash. Bergman should be embarrassed. Uh, this is just like I don't know, not for me. I am not the target yeah. audience. I don't know anything about Hoffman, ETA mm-hmm. Hoffman, uh, <laughs> expected time of arrival Hoffman. Um, I don't know about no Offenbach. I don't. Mm-hmm. I have never watched an opera in my life. I don't know if this is going to be driving me to the opera. I'd rather watch, you know, Fitzcarraldo again if I want to. Mm-hmm. If that's my opera, I guess. It's a pretty good opera, though. Yeah, Caruso, you know. Caruso. So I, I'm a Philistine, perhaps, but I, I don't know. I can't. I can't say I hate this because yeah. I. Yeah. I don't know. It's just kind of there. You're kind of like, mm-hmm. well. It's in the collection. It looks nice. Um, go Powell Pressburger fans. Sure. But it's... I wonder if even the, those boys, like the Powell and Press heads, I wonder if they would be into well, this too. You, you know? do. You know who? Uh, this is one of the, like the movie that inspired them to make movies. Take, Let me guess. Take no. Take a take a guess. You'll never guess. So the this is the thing that ins- Edgar Wright. No. No one like that. George Romero. He thought uh, this one? Yep. This is uh, on his 2002 Sight and Sound like cheat sheet, I guess, of movies that he oh. put on there. It's like his number 10, I think. Yeah, but you got to remember, he, called he was an old-ass guy. Favorite, yeah, well, he was an old-ass guy. Favorite film of all time. The movie that made me want to make movies. And, you know, when I, I knew that going in. Because this movie, I actually made a list of George Romero's 10 picks. I'm down to like, I think three movies now that I haven't seen. Mm-hmm. One of them is like a adaptation of uh brothers, uh, Kara, Karazmasov. Yes. Yeah. He, there's a, there's one with like Yul Brenner or something like that in it. I have not seen that one yet. I thought that was his number one, but, mm-hmm. uh, this is, that was on there. And so I was like, Oh, well, well, one day I guess I'll get around to seeing it. And here I am. But, uh, yeah, George A. Romero, a big fan of this and he actually introduced the film at the Toronto F- International Film Festival. Uh he also taped an interview for the Criterion collection that w- was not available to us anymore cuz this is another one of those uh Studio Canal movies I believe it's not print. Uh Martin Scorsese of course being a big Powell and Pressburger boy, he uh, did a commentary track for it as well in the Criterion edition. And I do believe, so the version we also watched of this is about 10 minutes longer than the original cut. 
Uh, that, that that was like a big deal restoration when it got uh, circulated again, like six, seven years ago. Or no, 2015, there was a 4K restoration by Scorsese's mm-hmm. uh, Film Foundation. Mm, okay. And look at that, Studio Canal. That is why it's not in the collection anymore. Mm-hmm. But we still have to watch it, RJ. We still have to watch we do? it. We do. And now it's done. Um, well, I don't mean, I don't know if we do. Or we did already, I guess. Uh, Cecil B. DeMille wrote a letter huh? to Powell Pressburger saying, quote, For the first time in my life, I was treated to grand opera, where the beauty, power, and scope of the music was equally matched by the visual presentation. Who said that? Cecil B. DeMille. Fuck, he's one of the one of all-time bangers. Big dogs. <laughs> one of the big dogs in the collection. Yeah, did he did do Cirque de Rouge? This will be the mill. Uh, Is that him? He might have done a version you know, of that. You know, with Cirque de Rouge with, with, with Ewan McGregor. No, with Cirque Rouge. <laughs> yeah, with Cirque Rouge was that Cecil B. the mill? No. What the fuck did he direct again? I can't I remember. remember. <laughs> I assume you're talking about Moulin Rouge. No, with Cirque Rouge. No, Jean Pierre Melville. Ah, uh, what did Cecil B do then again? Uh, Jesus movies, movies about ah uh, King of Kings, about Charlton, Charlton King Heston, King. yeah. Um, uh, Andre Bazin, you know you love him. He also yeah. said of this film, the cinema thus creates here a new artistic monster, the best legs adorned by the best voice. Not only is opera liberated from its material constraints, but also from its human limitations. Lastly, dance itself is renewed by the photography and the editing, which allows a kind of choreography of the second degree, not the first, where the rhythm of the dance is served by that of the cinema. I I, mean, I've been saying that for years. Yeah, so I mean, I do... Yeah, I mean, there probably is um, something to be said about like just like the what film could bring to elevate these sort of productions in terms of like, Hey, your actors can take breaks. They don't, they don't have to do this every single night and break their bodies and voices. And you just they do, don't you, you, have to do they that. They don't. Cause it's all on film and you can ship that around. I mean, you get paid some of those, the, the those film bucks. So like, I don't know. I, I, I do. Yeah. I, yeah. I kind of wonder like there was like that weird, probably tension between, uh, theater, opera, and then film. And I mean, there's like those, you know, opera at the Met things that theaters do, where it's like live feeds from, you know, a, a performance somewhere in New York that particular night, and then that one gets canned, and that's the one that gets streamed all the time. Mm-hmm. They do that kind of thing, and yeah, I mean, if you're if you have a lot more control when it's a movie, movie rather than just like a live stream of a theatrical production where there is going to be limitations. So I can see some people who are again into opera being very excited about that kind of thing. But I am just sort of like, no, that's fine. I, I like taking a Pelham one, two, three. (laughs) I mean, with with Jerry Stiller, it's got Jerry Stiller. I mean, Robert Robert, and Robert Shaw, Robert Shaw. Fuck. Look at that guy. eh? It's about, uh, Negative experiences on the ocean. What about negative encounters? There's those two. Well, I mean, honestly, you know about negative encounters, right, Jarrett? Mm-hmm. You ever seen those sharks and those bears? Some of them are negative. Not all of them, though. Not all of them. No. So, RJ, what did you think of the <laughs> Tales of Hoffman? Uh, I thought this was about... Dustin Hoffman. Oh, it wasn't. It was not. And I feel like I was misled for some reason. And I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, so I think a lot of the stuff you said makes some sense. Um, here's what I like about this movie. It looks great. Filming is great. The sets are great. Costumes are great. Production is great. Um... I like the way that they lay out a lot of this stuff. Like we've mentioned a lot of times we don't really like, well, I mean, I not speaking for both of us, but I'm not a huge fan of uh, 
theater productions put onto film because sometimes it's like mm. like, like Henry V. Like Henry V. Sometimes it doesn't translate. Uh, translate. And then there's things like the opposite end of that spectrum with things like Magic Flute, where it's like self-aware theater stuff, kind of. Um, and I'm not a big fan of that either. Uh, but this one does have a good mix of um, kind of leveling that off a little bit, where it's like theater and it's got the elements of theater. Where And what I mean by that is like, you know when there's things that are like sometimes like in front of everyone, but it's like a guy's like, and this is what I really meant. And it's like talking to audience type shit. Like I'm not a huge fan of that either. Cause I think that's dorky, but uh, I do think that they did it better in this. Um, and the way they present a lot of this stuff is nice. Uh, especially with like the props. Like I think the one scene that I really liked was like the boat scenes. I, I really like that one. Like the way that they showed it with like the huge black bat, uh, black matted back where it's just like a boat and it's just like blacked out background. I thought that looked really nice. Um, so that was cool. The sets were cool. The, uh, the costumes were really fun too. Like I did like how ridiculously huge that guy's eyebrows were. Like they were out, like they were honestly like two feet off of his head, I think. Oh which yeah. Was like, Those were sweet eyebrows. Yeah. So exaggerated, but like, I, I, I like that. I kind of like how exaggerated his eyebrows were. I was like, this is goofy, but in the good, in a good way. So I like that guy's eyebrows. Um, I also, I really kind of dug the magic realism of the, of the play and the opera, uh, where, and like, I know it's not full magic realism, but there were elements of that. And some of it's just like, I don't know. It'd be like, I'm doing this. And you're like, what are you doing? And then it'd be like, ah, and it'd just be someone dancing for a while. But then like everyone acknowledged it. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the story progressed somehow because of it. And you're like, okay. Um, but there's a, just the theatery bits of, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's technically magical realism, but it felt like magic to me. And I was okay with that. Uh, so I like that part, part of it. Um, what else? Kind of like what you said. It's got it's got great production. It's got uh, everything looks really nice. And I do like I like what they did with some of the filming later on. Like what I was saying, like right near the end when uh, all that stuff is done and you get girlfriend dancing and the guy that she's dancing with is kind of like changing as she's doing it. And then you have like the kaleidoscope effect where there's like four dancers up there and they're all moving like in unison a little bit. Like that looks really cool. Um, I liked all those scenes. Uh, but I am also very much with you where it's like, I'm, I'm not a fan of opera and I'm not a fan of ballet and I'm really not a fan of theater. Uh, so a lot of that is lost on me. So like when there's full scale scenes of people dancing, even though like like red shoes, I liked a lot, but I felt like there was a it wasn't too it wasn't that wasn't the whole thing. That wasn't all all that it was. I think that's like one of the big differences there. So um the ballet, I was ballet's fine. I'm not a huge fan. Opera, even like even less of a fan. I don't really like opera that much. It's just get to the point. Get to the point. Stop singing all the time. That's what I think. Uh, and then uh, theater. Oh, man. Don't even get me started on theater. Like in high school productions of people looking at the audience saying, this is where you laugh. Wink. And then you go, hmm. No, I'm not. I don't think I will. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I don't believe I will. <laughs> I don't believe I will. But you know what I mean? That's like theater stuff where it's like, I don't know. They're like, look at what we're what we're doing. And you're like, I see it. I see it. I think one of the biggest issues for me is I know a lot of like people who were like theater, opera type kids in like high school. And then they grew up and then they were the same people. And then I go, hmm, hmm. Grow out of that is what I say. Um, anyways, uh, a lot of that is lost on me quite a bit. So even though it's got all this really nice stuff in there, the fact that it's this like long winded opera 
with ballet and the theatrical stuff like i don't know it's not really for me i uh i will never think of this again this took me three nights to watch jared i was going to say that uh the the first night you sent me gifs of pavarotti uh that was like three, that was three days ago and i saw that you just logged the movie as being completed today and i'm like huh that's uh three days this was a three-dayer this was a three-day movie for me i watched about an hour and i went Whew. and then the next night i watched about a half an hour and i went more of the same and then the next night I watched the rest of whatever the 40 minutes was. And I was just like, ooh. Yeah, this took me three days. And then the biggest thing for me, well, not the biggest, but one thing I noticed was um, I was taking my screenshots and uh, just seeing, I didn't have the I didn't have the audio on. And uh, as it was just playing out and I just had like the subtitles and the, the nice pictures, I was like, this is actually a better movie without audio. <laughs> the musical. And, I mean, what what a what a mark, what, like what a seal for a movie. It's like, hey, if you want to really enjoy this, turn all the audio off, and then it's like, hmm, is that how movies should be? I don't know. And that that's probably just me, but uh, when I just saw the screenshots, or um, when I saw what was going on on the movie, Large, I just want to say that's a big slap in the face to Sir Thomas Beecham, who conducted this performance. I've I've never given a shit about that fucking guy. Beecham's nothing. Nothing. He he ain't got nothing on his contemporaries. Beecham, you know about like uh, Weedham or uh, Duchess. Those guys are way better. Way mm. better. Lord. But Lord and uh, Pleb. Those are all way better composers. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Is just watching the movie in silence was a little bit more enjoyable for me for some strange reason. But anyways, I don't know. Is, is it bad? No. It's not a bad movie. Is it got cool stuff? Yeah. Is it interesting? I don't know. Not to me. Not really. So no. never going to watch it again. Never going to think about it again. And uh, that's pretty much the moniker and uh, of our entire podcast. Yep. But it's done. That's that's so true. Got... Even See, that's the thing is it says nothing because that's true of like the good movies too. Yeah, that's true of the good movies too. So, I mean... I guess the point is that all of the criterion is fake. The, the point is there is no point. There is no point. And movies are meaningless, potentially. 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 So I got that going for me. So that's good. And here we are, the host of a movie podcast. Well, yeah. lightly. Tune in, folks. Uh, you want to hear from people who hate this movie? I mean, I guess. I I I'm, I imagine it's just people who don't like opera, and it's like, okay, then don't watch opera. But we'll see. One star from Pessoa Cease. Mm-hmm. If Frazier asks, I love this. But otherwise, nice to have on in the background whilst conducting some research. That said, typically dazzling visuals from P&P. I'm uh P and P. P and P. I don't know why they're talking about research. It seems pretentious. Well they said uh, Will Willst. <laughs> Willst. I don't have any favorite films, but some five star films include things like Empire Strikes Back, Terminator, Jurassic Park, Scarface, Jared. I know you're a big Scarface. What is guy. this what is this person being any anywhere near Tales of Hoffman? I don't know. Five stars to the Naked Gun. Like I, I mean, I don't know. They got they got a couple Criterion movies in here, but um, it's mostly Star Wars and stuff. So, I don't know. I've got a lengthy one here for you, RJ. Oh, okay. Ian Harris. Yeah, uh, yeah, Ian. One and a half stars. This is a lengthy boy. Someone really should have reined Powell and Pressburger in on this one. 
It's opulent beyond imagine, with some of the most spectacular, dazzling sets, costumes, and cinematic techniques you're likely to find anywhere. The whole thing is a visual feast that few films can even begin to match. That does nothing for the story, though, which is cold, confusing, emotionless, and becomes more and more tiresome as it drags on incessantly. The duo's mm-hmm. attempt to blend opera and ballet into something distinctly cinematic fails miserably. I'll admit I'm not familiar with the opera it's based on, but that shouldn't be a prerequisite for enjoyment of an adaptation. It's a complete mm-hmm. failure on the filmmaker's part to make it suit the medium. The songs may be well sung, but they aren't melodious at all and create a barrier for any kind of emotional engagement with the characters. They're all distinctly lacking in personality. I can't tell you a single thing about any of them outside of how well they dance. On top of that, the singing just makes it all the more confusing, often requiring subtitles just to understand what words are coming out of their mouths or someone else's mouth because this movie is yeah, dubbed. <laughs> it's, it's a peculiar mm-hmm. experience. Uh, it's very hard to care about something you can't even follow. It started out as amusingly bonkers, but by the end, I was just waiting for the credits to roll. I don't like to be this harsh, especially to filmmakers who've impressed me so much before, but this one was painful. It's one of the most pretentious, self-indulgent pieces of art I've ever seen. It feels like little more than a vain attempt to one-up the red shoes. Unfortunately, in this case... Lightning doesn't strike twice. Fuck, he smoked him. Smoked him. Check and mate. Uh, Ewan is a 24 perpetually falling in love with stars of the golden age. And uh, they love a good list. Uh huh. They love a good list, Jared. That's all it says. (laughs) Yeah. Love a good list. Thurston over golden age ladies. Apparently. And lists, I guess. Or boys. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Uh, favorite films include Roman Holiday, Barry Lyndon, Boyhood, and the Fabulous Baker Boys. Jesus, you familiar with those? Uh, with that Fabulous Baker Boys? I've heard of it. Yeah, I don't know. I I was trying to look at other stuff here. There's, it's not a lot too interesting. Not a lot too interesting, Jared. Mm. I mean, I don't, I don't even disagree. I don't really disagree with a lot of their sentiment, I suppose. Uh, though no, I think, like, no. the, 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 I would not say the problem with the film is its opulence. That's, like, what makes it even worthwhile at all. That is one of the only... That's yeah. the best part of it, to be honest. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, unfortunately, there's the... I don't know if it's just a total disconnect from opera in general, or or maybe it was the presentation of the story, or just like, I'm never going to like this in, in, yeah. a, in a million years. You're uh, not? Yeah. Okay. Finally, Benjamin Valentine, two stars. I don't mm. mind musicals, but I just wish they didn't feel the need to sing all the dialogue. <laughs> couldn't, uh. de- couldn't decipher most of what they were singing, so the actual story was difficult to follow and care about, with the expositional title cards being the only guide. You end up being forced to admire the style of the production design, which was very good, to be fair, and dancing for two hours whilst assuming some sort of substance is there. Whilst. Whilst. Whilst assuming. I whilst assume that Benjamin, as a film a day keeps the troubles at bay, no, no, he doesn't mean Michael, Jared. You get it? See what they mean? Nope. Uh, favorite films include Requiem for a Dream, Persona, Scott Pilgrim, and 2001 A Space Odyssey, Jarrett. Who's this character that's appeared? I don't know, but it feels right. So anyways, let's see what else they got on here. They got the five stars to Knives Out. Five stars to other movies. <laughs> oh, like Tenant? You haven't watched Tenant yet, have you? Uh, it's in the pile, but it's, it's also pile. two and a half hours long. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, I don't know. This is a bunch of general ass shit. Five stars like Shaun of the Dead, Citizen Kane, Blade Runner. You know, the huge. The huge. The well, huge. Enough of these pee holes. RJ, P-holes. you got any final thoughts here? on tales of hoffman the last time you'll ever think about this movie yeah not until, until until we watch like another really 
attractive looking movie. Yeah. That's kind of leaves you cold, and uh, I don't know. It's a mu- and it's opera. I'm sure I, there there will be one, and it'll get yeah. it's going to get us. It's going to get us. Um, it's not a bad movie. It's just. I don't know, it's not super interesting for me. I don't care about opera, so that's it's my own bag. Fair. It looks nice. No. Looks nice. Yep. That's all I got. Well. Yeah. After the break, mm-hmm. um, turns out we're both automatons. Allegedly. Now we're going to get fucked by weirdos. Right? 